Hello class, welcome to lecture 12. And in this lecture, we are going to be introducing the concept of a trajectory streamline, and also in some later segments, we'll introduce the idea of the thermal wind. But we'll get to that when we get to that. First thing I want to introduce is the idea of a trajectory and a streamline, so let's go ahead and dive right into it. So first off, the whole concept behind a trajectory is it's a way of modeling an air parcel's path as it travels through space and time. So the main thing that you want to consider when you think about trajectories is the fact that there is some sort of time dependence on the flow pattern. It means as time goes forward, or even as you go backward in time, the flow pattern is going to look very different. It's going, it's going to be evolving as it goes forward in time or as it goes back in time. And a lot of times we use this uh, definition, this mathematical definition, to model a trajectory. So typically a trajectory is given by this r vector. So that's the position of an air parcel given that, so this function that's a, fu so this x of t right here, that's the x coordinate of our air parcel as a function of time. And then this y of t is the y coordinate as a function of time. And this z of t is the z coordinate as a function of time. And you see this is represented as a vector quantity. So this entire thing represents the x component. This entire thing represents the y component. And this entire thing represents the z component. And then that entire thing is just equal to this r vector. And again, this trajectory or this r vector is modeling our air parcel as it, our air parcel's position as we go through time. Now there's a few other things we can do with this to get some more information out of it. So this is giving us information on the position of the air parcel. However, if we want to get uh, get more information on the velocity of the air parcel, and one thing I should also point out is this is in fact a parametric equation. So hopefully you remember the concept of parametric equations from your earlier math classes in which instead of having uh, one coordinate y as a function of another coordinate x, all of the individual coordinates are functions of a single parameter. So in this case, the co coordinates x, y, and z are all a function of a single parameter, which is just time in this case. But the whole, now we can actually do something to get with this equation to get information on the velocity. So if this represents my position, if this r of t represents my, the position of the air parcel, then if I take a time derivative of this equation, then I can get an expression for the velocity of the air parcel as that evolves through time and space. So that would look something like this. So velocity is just equal to the partial derivative of our position vector r with respect to time. And if we distribute that derivative operator to every component in the, the expression for r, then we get that the velocity is just equal to dx dt i hat plus dy dt j hat plus dz dt k hat. But you may remember that one of the definitions for the zonal wind is the change in x over the change in time. And the meridional one is change in the y meridional component over change in time. And the vertical wind is just dz dt, the change in the vertical coordinate with respect to time. So we can just simply rewrite that as where it was essentially the most fundamental definition we started with. So that was this was one way we could define our wind vector. Although in that case, we sort of implied that the wind vector was a function of x, y, z, and t. It wasn't specifically stated, but now we can actually show that mathematically that our zonal, our zonal, meridional, and vertical components of our wind do in fact now have a time dependence when we introduce the idea of this trajectory. And we can also do, so this is, gives us the velocity, but if we wanted to, we could also see how the acceleration evolves with time. And that'll involve uh, taking the derivative of our velocity vector with respect to time. Or another way of putting this is we take a second derivative of our, of our position vector to get the acceleration vector. So that's what that would just simply involve. Just simply take a time derivative of the u, v, and w components. And then you get an expression that looks like this. And occasionally you will see this notated as just the acceleration vector is equal to ax, a sub x of time plus a sub y of time plus a sub d of time with the appropriate unit vectors put in front of the uh, appropriate terms. And again, this gives us the local change in, or the change in uh, zonal wind plus the change in meridional wind plus the change in vertical wind all with respect to time. So that's a look at trajectories. Now I want to go ahead and contrast this with the idea of a streamline. A streamline also models a it also models a air parcel's uh, path through space, but it does not have a time dependency. T streamlines are completely independent of time. In fact, a better definition of streamline is it's a snapshot view of what a flow pattern looks like at a specific point in time, and that's the definition that you'll 
that you'll most often see. And because it's a snapshot view of the flow field at a specific point in time, there is no time dependence. So in the case of trajectories, there was a time dependence. There was an explicit time dependence that uh, goes into trajectories, but in streamlines, there is no time dependence. It is, in fact, a time-independent uh, flow field when you're looking at streamlines. One thing that's really useful about streamlines is we can there's something called a streamline analysis, and we'll show an example of that later on. And this will also be something you cover in some of your related classes, especially in, Synop in the Synoptic Laboratory in your senior year. But the uh, streamline analysis can be a very good way of visualizing what exactly the flow pattern looks like. And they're pretty easy to do, actually. All you do is just um, draw a, uh, just basically draw a curved line or a straight line that runs parallel to every wind barb that you see on the map. And in fact, let's go ahead and take a look at, well, first let me, uh, go ahead and reiterate. In general, a trajectory is not the same thing as a streamline. However, there is a special case of this. If you have a steady state situation or a steady state solution, that means the flow is completely independent of time. In that case, your trajectory and your streamline are going to be equivalent. If there's no time dependence, then the trajectory doesn't have any time dependence and you just have a flow field that's completely time independent, in which case the trajectory is equal to the streamline, but in general, the trajectory is not the same thing as a streamline. But let's go ahead and take a look at an example of a streamline analysis. And this might be the end product that you would get from a streamline analysis. Normally you would have uh, wind barbs plotted and then you would draw all the lines to run parallel to the wind barbs. But this is a great way for visualizing the flow field if you're given, say, an, uh, a map of observations. And you can see some features that uh, do kind of stand out here. So over here where this one is circled, you can see we have uh, an anticyclonic flow pattern, which would tend to indicate uh, a surface high in the northern hemisphere. So the flow is moving away from the high, and it's also rotating clockwise as it does so. And over here at point three, this point over here, we have what looks like a cyclone. So, or it looks, excuse me, this looks like a, another anticyclone. So again, we have, so we have two anticyclones here. They both, the flow is moving away from the center of these two features and it's also wanting to rotate in the clockwise direction. And over here at point two, we see an example of what's referred to as a deformation field. Hopefully you remember what uh, that idea looks like from lecture nine. But you can see as we go along one axis, we have winds going towards a common point as this axis, and as we go along the other axis, the winds are diverging. They're going away from that same common point. So this would indicate a deformation pattern, and a lot of times when you see a pattern like this in the atmosphere, that would indicate the presence of a front or a front that's in the process of developing. And over here at point four, we see what looks like a cyclone. We have winds going toward the center and then rotating counterclockwise. Again, this is a, a snapshot, a streamline analysis for the northern hemisphere. And you see we have another deformation. And this would actually probably be a cold front right here. And this probably is a warm front. There is a bit of a, we do have a bit of what's referred to as confluence where the streamlines uh, kind of all combine into one. But you, we'll take a closer look at the structure of cyclones in the atmosphere in some later lectures, but I just want to introduce the idea of a streamline analysis and just to sort of give you an idea of uh, how it can actually, how it helps you to visualize the flow of what's actually going on at a specific point in time. And you'll talk more about these in some of your later classes. But that's going to do it for this introductory segment for lecture 12. And that's going to do it for a first look at trajectories and streamlines. There is some mathematics that go into streamlines, but it's not immediately important to us. Uh, you'll cover those in some of your later dynamics classes. But uh, for now, that's all we're going to worry about as far as trajectories and streamlines are a concern. So that's going to do it for this first segment. And in the next segment, we will actually start talking about the idea of the thermal wind. So I will see you all there.